chapter 16, An Evening at Mahjong. That night, we had a little Mahjong party. This kind of simple entertainment is very popular in Queen's Abbot. The guests arrive in the lodges of Waterloo's after dinner. They were taking the later of fake sandwiches. On this particular night, our guests were Miss Gannett and Colonel Carter, who lives in the church. A good deal of gossip is handed around in these meetings, sometimes seriously preparing for the game of progress. We used to play bridge, chatty bridge of the worst description. We find Mahjong much more peaceful. The irritated demand as to why on earth your partner did not leave a certain card is entirely done away with. Although we still express quickness and strength, there is not the same acrimonious spirit. Very cold evening, eh, Shepard? said Colonel Carter, standing with his back to the fire. Caroline had taken Miss Gannett to her own room, and there was there assisting her to disentangle herself from her many wraps. Reminds me of the Afghan passes. Indeed, I said politely. A very mysterious business about this poor Ackroyd, continued the Colonel, accepting a cup of coffee. A deuce of a lot behind it, that's what I say. Between you and me, Shepard, I've heard the word blackmail mentioned. The colonel gave me the look which might be tabulated one man of the world to another. A woman in it, no doubt, he said. Depend upon it, a woman in it. Caroline and Miss Gannett joined us this minute. Miss Gannett drank coffee whilst Caroline got out the mahjong box and poured out the tiles upon the table. Washing the tiles, said the colonel facetiously. That's right, washing the tiles, as we used to say in the Shanghai Club. It is the private opinion of both Caroline and myself that Colonel Carter has never been in the Shanghai Club in his life. More, that he has never been further east than India, where he juggled with tins of bully beef and club and apple jam during the Great War. But the Colonel is determinedly military, and in King's Abbot we permit people to indulge their little idiosyncrasies freely. Shall we begin? said Caroline. We sat round the table. For some five minutes, there is complete silence, owing to the fact that there is tremendous secret competition amongst us as to who can build their wall quickest. Go on, James, said Caroline at last. You're east wind. I discarded a tile. A round or two proceeded, broken by the monotonous remarks of three bamboos, two circles, hung, and frequently from Miss Gannett, unhung, owing to that lady's habit of too hastily claiming tiles to which she had no right. I saw Cora Ackroyd this morning, said Miss Gannett. Pung, no, unpung. I made a mistake. Four circles, said Caroline. Where did you see her? She didn't see me, said Miss Gannett. That tremendous significance only to the back of the small village. Ah, said Caroline interestingly. Ciao. I believe, said Miss Gannett, temporarily diverted. That is the right thing nowadays to say chi, not chow. Nonsense, said Caroline. I have always said chow. In the Shanghai Club, said Colonel Carter, they say chow. Miss Gannett retired, crushed. What were you saying about Flora Ackroyd? asked Caroline, after the year two to go into the game. Was she with anyone? Very much so, said Miss Gannett. The eyes of the two ladies met and seemed to exchange information. Really? said Caroline, interestedly. Is that it? Well, it doesn't surprise me in the least. We're waiting for you to discard, Miss Caroline, said the colonel. He sometimes affects the pose of the bluff male, intent on the game and indifferent to gossip, but nobody is to see. If you ask me, said Miss Gannon, is that a big boon you discarded here? Oh, no, I see now. It was a circle. As I was saying, if you ask me, Flora has been exceedingly lucky. Exceedingly lucky she's been. How's, how's that, Miss Gannon? asked the colonel. I'll pwn that green dragon. How do you make out that Miss Flora is very lucky? Very charming girl and all that, I know. I may not know much about crime, said Miss Gannett, with the air of one who knows everything there is to know. But I can tell you one thing. The first question that's always asked is, who is the last that saw the deceased alive? And that, and the person who did is regarded with suspicion. Now Flora Ackroyd last saw her uncle alive. It might have looked very nasty for her. Very nasty indeed. It's my opinion and I give it for what it's worth, that Ralph Payton is staying away on her account to draw suspicion away from her. Come now, I protested mildly. You surely can suggest that a young girl like Flora Ackroyd is capable of stabbing her uncle in cold blood. Well, I don't know, said Miss Gannett. 
I've just been reading a book from the library about the underworld of Paris, and it says that some of the worst women criminals are young girls with the faces of angels. That's in France, said Caroline instantly. Just so, said the colonel. Now I'll tell you a very curious thing, a story that was going round in the bazaars in India. The colonel's story was one of the interminable, was one of interminable length, and of course, and of curiously little interest. A thing that happened in India many years ago cannot compare for a moment with an event that took place in King's Abbey the day of the festival. It was Caroline who brought the colonel's story to a close by fortunately going mahjong. After the slight unpleasantness always caused by my corrections of Caroline's somewhat faulty arithmetic, we started with the hand. East wind passes, said Caroline. I've got an idea of my own about Ralph Payton. Three characters. But I'm keeping it to myself for the present. Are you, dear? said Miss Gannick. Chow, I mean, hung. Yes, said Caroline firmly. Was it all right about the boots? asked Miss Gannick. They're being black, I mean. Quite all right, said Caroline. What was the point, do you think? asked Miss Gannick. Caroline pursed up her lips and shook her head with an air of knowing all about it. Hung, said Miss Gannick. No, unhung. I suppose that now the doctor's in with Monsieur Poirot, he knows all the secrets. Far from it, I said. James is so modest, said Caroline. Ah, a concealed calm. Colonel gave vent to a whistle. For the moment, gossip was forgotten. Your own wind, too, he said. And you've got two pugs of dragons. We must be careful. Miss Caroline's out for a thin hand. We played for some minutes with no irrelevant conversation. This is Monsieur Poirot said Colonel Carter. Is he really such a great detective? The greatest the world has ever known, said Caroline solemnly. He is, he has to come here incognito to avoid publicity. Ciao, said Miss Gannett. Quite wonderful for a little village, I'm sure. By the way, Clara, my maid, you know, is great friends with Elsie, the housemaid at Fernley. And what do you think Elsie told her? That there's been a lot of money stolen, and it's her opinion, Elsie's, I mean, that the parlor maid had something to do with it. She's leaving at the month, and she's crying a good deal at night. If you ask me, the girl's very likely in league with a gang. She's always been a good girl. She's not friends with any of the girls around here. She goes off by herself on her days out. Very unnatural, I call it, and most suspicious. I asked her once to come to our friendly girls but she refused, and then I asked her a few questions about her home and her family, all that sort of thing, and I'm bound to say I consider her man your most impertinent, outwardly very respectful, but she shut me up in the most barefaced way. Miss Gannett stopped for breath, and the colonel, who was totally uninterested in the servant question, remarked that in the Shanghai club, brisk play was the invariable rule. We had a round of brisk play. That Miss Russell said Caroline. She came here pretending to consult James on Friday morning. It's my opinion. She wanted to see where the poisons were kept. Five characters. Chow, said Miss Gannett. What an extraordinary idea. I wonder if you can be right. Talking of poisons, said the colonel. Hey, what? Haven't I discarded? Oh, ape him. Mahjong, said Miss Gannett. Caroline was very much annoyed. One red dragon, she said regretfully, and I should have had a hand of three doubles. I've had two red dragons all the time, I mentioned. I exactly like you, James, said Caroline reproachfully. You've no conception of the spirit of the game. I myself thought I had played rather cleverly. I should have had to pay Caroline an enormous amount if she had got mahjong. Miss Gannett's mahjong was of the poorest variety possible, as Caroline did not fail to point out to her. East wind passed, and we started a new hand in silence. What I was going to tell you just now was this, said Caroline. Yes? said Miss Gannett, encouragingly. My idea about Ralph Payton, I mean. Yes, dear, said Miss Gannett, still more encouragingly. Chow. It's a sign of weakness to chow so early, said Caroline Severe. You should go for a big hand. I know, said Miss Gannett. You were saying about Ralph Payton, you know? Yes, well, I have a pretty shrewd idea of where he is. We all stopped to stare at her. This is very interesting, Miss Caroline. Said Colonel Carter. All your own idea, eh? Well, not exactly. I'll tell you about it. You know that big map of the county we have in the hall? We all said yes. As Mr. Poirot was going out the other day, he stopped and looked at it, and he made some remark. I can't remember exactly what it was. Something about Cranchester being the only big town anywhere near us, which is true, of course. But after he had gone, it came to me suddenly. What came to you? 
his meaning. Of course Ralph is in Franchester. It was at that moment that I knocked down the rack that held my pieces. My sister immediately reproved me for clumsiness, but half-heartedly. She was intent on her theory. Grantchester, Miss Caroline, said Colonel Carter. Surely not Grantchester, it's so near. That's exactly it, cried Caroline triumphantly. It seems quite clear by now that he didn't get away from here by train. He must simply have walked into Grantchester, and I believe he's still there. No one would dream of his being so near at hand. I pointed out several objections to the theory, but when once Caroline has got something firmly into her head, nothing dislodges it. And you think Mr. Poirot has the same idea, said Miss Gannett thoughtfully. It's a curious coincidence, but I was out for a walk this afternoon on the Franchester Road, and he passed me in a car coming from that direction. We all looked at each other. Why, dear me, said Miss Gannett suddenly. I'm Mahjong all the time, and I never notice. Caroline's attention was distracted from her own inventive exercises. She pointed out to Miss Gannett that a hand consisting of Miss suits and too many chows was hardly worth going mahjong on. Miss Gannett listened to the her and collected her counters. Yes, dear, I know what you mean, she said, but it rather depends on what kind of a hand you have to start with, doesn't it? You'll never get the big hands if you don't go for them, urged Caroline. Well, we must all play our own way, mustn't we, said Miss Gannett. She looked down at her counters. After all, I'm up so far. Caroline, who was considerably down, said nothing. East wind passed, and we set to once more. Annie brought in the tea things. Caroline and Miss Gannett were both slightly ruffled, as is often the case during one of these festive evenings. If you would only play a little quicker, dear, said Caroline, as Miss Gannett hesitated over her discard. The Chinese put down the tiles so quickly it sounds like little birds pattering. For some minutes we played like the Chinese. You haven't contributed much to the sum of information, Shepard said Colonel Carter genially. You're a sly dog, hand in glove with a great detective, and not a hint as to the way things are going. James is an extraordinary creature, said Caroline. He cannot bring himself to part with information. She looked at me with some disfavor. I assure you, I said, that I don't know anything. Quarrow keeps his own counsel. Wise man, said the Colonel with a chuckle. He doesn't give himself away, but they're wonderful fellows, these foreign detectives. A dull sort of dodges, I believe. Punk, said Miss Gannett in a tone of quiet triumph. And Mahjong! The situation became more strained. It was annoyance at Miss Gannett's going Mahjong for the third time running, which prompted Caroline to say to me as we built a fresh wall, You are too tiresome, James. You sit there like a deadhead and say nothing at all. But my dear, I protested, I have really nothing to say that is of the kind you mean. Nonsense, said Caroline as she sorted, sorted her hand. You must know something interesting. I did not answer for a moment. I was overwhelmed and intoxicated. I had read of there being such a thing as the perfect winning, going mahjong on one's original hand. I had never hoped. To hold the hand myself. With suppressed triumph, I, I laid my hand face upwards on the table. As they say in the Shanghai Club, I remarked, Tin Ho, the perfect witness. The colonel's eyes nearly bulged out of his head. Upon my soul, he said, what an extraordinary thing. I never saw that happen before. It was then that I went on, goaded by Carolyn Jives, and rendered reckless by my triumph. And as to anything interesting, I said, what about a gold wedding ring with a date and from R inside? I pass over the scene that followed. I was made to say exactly where this treasure was found. I was made to reveal the date. March 13th, said Caroline, just six months ago. Ah! Oh. Out, of, out of a babble of excited suggestions and suppositions, three theories were evolved. One that of Colonel Carter, that Ralph was secretly married to Flora, the first or most simple solution. Two, that of Miss Gannett, that Roger Ackroyd had been secretly married to Mrs. Sparrow. Three, that of my sister, that Roger Ackroyd had been secret, that Roger Ackroyd had married his housekeeper, Miss Russell. The fourth, or super theory, was recounted by Caroline later as we went up to bed.
Mark my words, she said suddenly. I shouldn't be at all surprised if Jeffrey Raymond and Flora weren't married. Surely it would be from G, not from R, then, I suggested. You never know. Some girls call men by their surnames. And you heard what Miss Gannett said this evening about Flora's carryings on. Strictly speaking, I had not heard Miss Gannett say anything of the kind, but I respected Caroline's knowledge of innuendos. How about Hector Blunt, I hinted. If it's anybody... Nonsense, said Caroline. I dare say he admires her, may even be in love with her, but depends upon it, a girl isn't going to fall in love with a man old enough to be her father when there's a good-looking secretary about. She may encourage Major Blunt just as a, a blind. Girls are very artful. But there's one thing I do tell you, James Shepard. Flora Ackroyd does not care a penny piece for Ralph Payton and never has. You can take it from me. I took it from her, me.